I think um, one of the one of the things I appreciate most about Scripture, honestly, is just how raw and real it can be. Um, you know, of course, you've got you've got spirit sprinkle verses, right? So often they get taken out of context. I call them bumper sticker verses or coffee mug verses that maybe are, are, are inspiring by themselves or you put them on a picture on the wall as a reminder. And, and there's certainly nothing wrong with those. I think they're a beautiful thing. I use them all the time. Whether it's Philippians 4.13, Jeremiah 29.11, Psalm 23. I mean, just there, there is a realness because even when you look behind the scenes of those verses, um, what makes them powerful is the context. You know, when you look at Jeremiah 29, 11, God's people were being overtaken um, by an enemy. When you look at Philippians 4, 13, Paul's talking about being destitute. And um, no matter what, if he's high or low, he's got Jesus. He's, he's good to go. Um, Psalm 23, walking through the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Like all these, what gives like these spirit sprinkle verses their power is the context and the struggle behind them. And, and we're no different today and where we find ourselves in Luke. Right now in Luke, so let's back up, you know, Jesus just healed the centurion servant. And the centurion servant, you know, you gotta think there's just a jubilee, like he's alive and it's powerful and everybody's excited and they're, they're, it's, a, it's a really captivating scene, you know, because again, the first six chapters were Jesus with his disciples preparing them, getting them ready and now his real, public ministry begins now in, in chapter seven. So we first see the centurion servant healed, which was amazing. But we're going to go to a very different scene now. Um, so you leave Capernaum, um, just full of excitement and joy, and you step into this town called Nain. And, and, and it's not so much that the town, there's anything wrong with the town, but you step in as soon as you step in, you're stepping into a funeral. You're stepping into a funeral. And so this is what what we read in, in verse 7, 11, it says, Soon after he went to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd went with him. As he drew near to the gate of the town, behold, a man who had died was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And a considerable crowd from the town was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. He had compassion on her and said, Do not week. So a very somber town because, you know, for us here, it's hard to relate because we have so much social programs and, and ways for people to receive help back in that culture. You know, when a, when a, when a wife lost her husband, well, then she had to rely on her son to care for her. And if she lost her son, she was forced to beg. She would go to be enslaved, all those things, like all these bad things would happen. And so I say that to say, like, this was a, a somber scene for her. Not to mention, it's a mom. She lost her son. You know, I got to say, you know, one of the hardest parts of, of what I get to do and the way that God gets to use me, sure, it's it's great to be at a racetrack and, and praying with people and, and being in that environment. But at the end of the day, like, sitting with a mom who just lost her son sucks. And it's hard being with a family that's full of questions and anger is just really hard to do. Um, and I'm grateful that God has allowed me the opportunity to do something like that. And so this, this scene in, in verse in chapter seven really hits hard for me, if I'm honest, because I know what that scene is like and it's really hard. And I don't want you to read right over that and miss that. I want you to think about, think about your son or your daughter. Think about what that must feel. And that's important because of, of where we're going. Um, you know, Jesus in verse 13, this is where I want to get to. He said, he had compassion on her. He said, do not weep. He had compassion. Do you know what it means to have compassion? So a really good, insightful definition of compassion just yesterday. It said, compassion is feeling your pain in my heart. It's feeling your pain in my heart. And I think if I'm honest in this world today, compassion is something that's lost between people. Just the average person standing next to you in line. We are so full of 
worry and so full of hurry and so full of our own lives that we lose sight to have compassion on those around us. I struggle with it. I'm not immune to it like anybody else. And man, I got to just tell you, these last couple of days, it's really captivated me on this idea of compassion. And that maybe I need to slow down a little bit in my own life to have compassion on those around me. And so I don't know what that looks like for you. Maybe there's somebody at work you're struggling with. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's a child. I don't know. Um, but sometimes having compassion can change your perspective on everything. And so I don't know what that looks like for you today. But I think, you know, if I could encourage you and maybe even challenge you if there's a way that you need to grow in it. And to focus on that word compassion. To willingly feel someone else's pain in your heart. Anyway, y'all, I know it's a heavy day. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back next week.